I gotta go praise Zan. It's like, hey, I don't want to do it, but I gotta do it. My mama said, you know, my mama said, my daddy said, but no, you should want to serve the Lord. He brought you on the earth, and he can take you out just like that. So you should be thankful that he actually lets you see another day. That's what we don't see in our head. We say that, oh, I leave when I leave. There's no matter, so I'm just gonna do what I want to do when I want to do. That's what we think. Like our parents say, when I turn 18, I'm back. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. But trust and believe, you need to have the word of God in you Amen. just as well as you need it to have it in you right now. Yeah. Now I'm going to go to Proverbs. That's, that's, just, that's just seeking. You need to seek God. Instead of seeking them girls and seeking them boys, you need to seek the word of God. You need to seek the Bible. You need to seek more that's in the Bible. This right here. Not, not, not like yet. A, a book of a magazine or a Abuse book, the Bible. Instead of just opening and say, oh, that's the book. Y'all want to close the book. I looked at the Bible. Yes, yeah. I did that. No, we need the Bible. We need something in it. Yeah. Some people don't even know all the books of the Bible. I don't, but I know some. <laughs> it's not like a thing about knowing it. At least you're trying. You're trying to know. Get some, get some heart into it. Just like you have a passion for going to parties and dancing, yeah. you need to have a passion of learning the, the word of God. Yeah. And I'm speaking to this section right here because it looks like one of y'all looking at it like a crazy. So I'm, I'm, t I'm saying we, we need to seek the Bible more than we seek other things, material things. We seek to go to the store to buy a pack of gum, then go to church and praise the Lord. I see, I, I, can, I can say we probably attend more parties than we do second service. Amen. We, look, no, look, look, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Some of us don't go to second service because they don't want to. Or the night service at 7.30, well, the party started at 8, so if I go 30 minutes to church and then 30 minutes to the party, I might be good. I know, I know most of us do. We go to church and then to a party. And then that Sunday morning, oh, I'm tired because I, I, I slept too late. No, you was at that party doing whatever you wanted to do, however you wanted to do. We need to be more Christian-like outside, although inside. Instead of being a Christian inside of the church, we need to spread it outside. There you go. Because there's people there you go. that has lost souls that we can save. You don't even know that. Their testimony is so strong. That we can stand up here and give a testimony and it inspire this whole bit. You know what I'm saying? It, it, okay, I'm going to go. That's just seeking. So when you seek, you need to trust. And, it, and it's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. If you want to go there, you can go there with me. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. So now you got to seek part to seek the Bible instead of seeking them girls and boys. So now you have to trust in the Lord. We need to trust the Lord with our, with our, with our soul. Just as you trust in your best friend and keeping that secret, you need to trust in God. Yeah. Like, oh, she ain't going to say nothing. She quiet as a little mouse. You know what I mean? She ain't going to say nothing. So and so was just at that party and, you know, she was a church you know what I mean? But you can't whisper or tell a secret about God. Yeah. Amen. How Come many on. of you in this room, speaking of you, has ever trusted one of you, trusted, you told the Lord something and trusted that he was going to do it or keep that secret? Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Okay. That's it. Okay. Put your hands down. Now, how many of you have been trusted in your best friend and they turned their back? Say it. Now, you see what I'm saying? You have to trust in the Lord because he'll keep everything that you need. He'll help you when you need to be helped. Trust him. Instead of trusting in yourself or trusting your friends and you going to lean on them, they ain't going to be there all the time. You're going to call. But if you trust in God, he'll catch you in the midst of your call. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. So now you're seeking the Bible and not them girls and boys and now you're trusting in the Lord and not your friends anymore. So now you can go on to obey. So now, since you got the ST, you can go to the O. All so right. It goes to Ephesians 6 and 1. Mm -hmm. This is going to help one of y'all. <laughs> Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this 
is right. Let me say that again. I saw, I saw you in this corner right here. I saw you. I saw you. It says, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Did you know that when you, when you obey your parents, may your life be longer? Now, if you disobey them, your life will be short. I'm letting you know. As much as you, you might think, oh, well, disobeying in the link, I, I repent, so, you know what I mean? I ain't out the house yet, so they must not be that mad. You know what I'm saying? Why they say it to me? They give me attitude, I'm going to give them attitude right back. No, it don't go like that. God is not asking you to do it. He's telling you, this is the right thing to do, so do it. You know what I'm saying? It's, you need to know that. You need, you need to obey your parents, just as you obey your pastor. Most of you obey your pastor more than your parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got quiet. Got quiet. I just heard a penny drop. <laughs> it says, you, you obey your parents. For this is right. What's so hard in obeying your parents? Yeah, they might get hard on you, but they love you. It's tough love. Yeah. You can take how can you take tough love from your friends, but you can't take it from your parents? That's right. You can argue with your friends, you know, like, oh, I'm just playing, I'm sorry, bro, but you can't apologize to your parents. Uh -huh. I don't apologize to them. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. It feels so hard in doing it. You can apologize for yourself, like I'm sorry, God, for doing that, but what's wrong with you apologizing for your parents? Right. You never thought about that, huh? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> well, think about it. Think about it. Obey your parents. So, so, now, so now we're going somewhere. So now we got the seeking, right? You see in the Bible and not the boys and girls. You're trusting in the Lord and not your friends. And now you're obeying your parents and not obeying what you want to do. So now, since you got the S, T, and O, you can go on to the people. All right. So now you can pray. Now, it goes to Philippians. Help us, help us. I'm not going to quote it. I'm not going to quote it. I'm going to get the Bible. because it, it's, it's good having the Bible with you so you know the exact words. A pastor taught me that. A pastor taught me that. <laughs> Philippians 4, 6, 7, and 9. It says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let me stop right there. How many of you pray on a regular basis? I saw a lot of hands just go there. How many of you pray every day? When you wake up, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. And you actually mean it from your heart. Not just saying it. Help us, help us, Act help us. Okay, hold on, I'm going to help you right here. Keep your hands, keep your hands. How many of you pray at school, but not asking God to get you out of something that you got your own self into? Uh, a lot of hands just went down. How many of you just pray, just, you just thought about God, so you want to talk to him? You just want to talk to him? That's good, that's good. I can't say I do that. Because I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I pray to him at school, sometimes when I'm in trouble, and sometimes when I'm not. Now, how many, how many of us get in trouble at school? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Hands go up. Now, 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 there's a reason. Do you think that? Okay, 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 okay. So, that's a lot. That's a lot. Now, do you pray with your heart or do you just pray with your mind? Like, you have to mean it from your heart in order for God to hear. You can't just pray out loud. You, okay, you, let, me, let me give you an example. You're praying, you're crying, your family member just died. And you're praying, God, why, please, Lord, just, you're crying. Now, if you're not meaning it from your heart, I'm not saying that you're not. But if you're not, how... How is he supposed to know that you're serious? You can go back forth, back and forth and repent to him. But why, why keep repenting if you're doing the same thing over and over? God, please forgive me. I won't do this again. And then you go back out and do it again. We shouldn't be doing that. It says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Meaning, tell him what you want. 
You might think, okay, Lord, please let me get this PlayStation 3. Go for Christmas, Lord. Lord, let me get the PS4, Lord. It just came out, Lord. Please let me get it. Lord, and then if he don't give it to you, then he he give me my PS4. Why he ain't do that? Oh, but he can answer everybody else's prayers. No, he's an on-time God. I need you to know that. That he come, he might not come when you want him to, but he's an on-time God. Just to believe that. It says the peace of God and the peace of God which passes. All understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. If you want peace, pray to him. All you have to do is talk to God. Just like you talk to your friends about everything, you gossip, talk to God. What's so hard about talking to God? What's so hard about it? I don't know what's so hard about it. I can do it. If I can do it, I think everybody in this room can do it. If a little five-year-old can do it, any, any one of you can do it. Seriously. Seriously. So, so, now, so now we're getting a grasp of stuff. We have to seek, seek in the Bible instead of seeking them boys and girls. We have to trust, trust in the Lord instead of trusting in thy own self and in your friends. We have to obey, obey your parents instead of obeying everyone else. And we have to peak prayer. So we have to stop what we're doing. You know what you're doing, so stop. Anything that you're doing wrong, we have to stop using drugs at this age, smoking weed. We need to stop that as Christian youth. We need to stop drinking the alcohol that we're drinking as Christian youth. You see, I say Christian youth because it says, we don't, why? Why drink? Why drink at this age? Because it's going to mess up your liver. Then if you smoke, it's going to mess up your brain. You might think it's healthy, but it's not. Oh, yeah, weed marijuana is healthy. It's healthy for me. No, it's not. Because then the next day, you're going to be like, oh, what you supposed to do? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You have to know what you're doing to your body. You might not think right now it's not doing that. Oh, I'm perfectly healthy. I can run. I got the energy. I'm still healthy. I can still sing in the choir. You know what I'm saying? But when you get older, it's going to hit you. Ask some of the adults. They know. <laughs> Listen, listen. So we have to stop doing what we're doing. We have to stop acting like a wannabe Christian and become a true Christian. We have to stop. That's why the theme is Christian, you stop. Stop what you're doing and be a Christian. Be a true youth in your youth department. How many of you are actually active in your church? Not just at the convention. Okay. <laughs> I hope this is just all adults because I don't see no hands. Okay. That's good. That's good. Now, now, when you're active, do you mean what you're doing? Like, do you do it for yourself? Like, oh well, I got a lot of attention on me. You know what I mean? Oh well, everybody like me praise dancing. Everybody like me playing the drums, playing the organ, playing the piano, singing in the choir. I got a wonderful voice. Why not show it? They clap for me. I get all of the glory. No, God gets the glory. So you need to stop acting like you're getting all of the glory because you're not. Because you're making yourself look crazy. I'm letting you know. I'm letting you know. Because if you're up here and you're thinking, oh, you're, you're being selfish. You're being selfish in pride. You're, you, I'm telling you. I'm telling you because I used to do it. That's why I'm telling you my experience. I used to think I, was, I couldn't be touched. Ah, I can say Nobody can sing better than Tremaine. And what happened? You see my voice now? I can't sing. I can't hit a note. I can sing in a quad, but I can't sing like I used to. Because God, God, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm being serious. I have the highest soprano voice in the world. I yes, swear. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. And then what happened? Look at this man. Look at the plan. Look at the my head. I got a big head. And I thought I was just, couldn't be touched. Don't let that happen. So we need to stop while we can. Don't try to be in the choir and praise dance just for attention. Do it for the right reason to praise God. So I tell you one more time, Christian you, we need to stop.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.